Hey everyone, a very happy Tuesday and welcome back to our Arm Tech Talk series. This is the place for the latest and greatest in trends, technologies and best practices from Arm and partners in our ecosystem. It's great to have you with us today, wherever you're joining us from, if it's your morning, afternoon, evening, if you're in the car grabbing a coffee or if you're sat in the office watching this, great to have you with us for this week's Tech Talk. And, and actually I'm really sad because it's the last one before our summer break. Um, so really, really excited though today to have Dejiram uh, for our final tech talk before we break for summer, uh, talking about a really exciting little workshop you'll be able to follow alongside with uh, around real-time object detection models on uh, the ARM-based Raspberry Pi and the uh, Orca system. Uh, but if you've attended one of these tech talks before, you know the drill, what's coming next. I've got one little bit of housekeeping to do, uh, telling you how you can get involved in the conversation uh, before I hand over to Shashi and the team from the Jiram who are going to take it away with today's tech talk. So Shashi, if you can go to the next slide, uh, that would be great. So if you want to get involved with today's uh, Arm Tech Talk, you can, of course, tweet us or use this hashtag on LinkedIn to uh, tell us what you've enjoyed about the series so far. If you've been a regular viewer, uh, we'd love to hear from you. All of the Tech Talks, I think we have passed 70 now. I think last week's talk was the 70th Tech Talk, which is just phenomenal. This is a great resource for you to go and look at the latest and greatest from Arm Partners. Uh, go ahead, check out all the recordings on youtube.com slash arm. And all of our upcoming tech talks for the future will be uh, available on arm.com slash tech talk. So check back at that link uh, over the coming weeks as we get our schedule together for what's coming up in the latter part of this year. I'm really excited to have that, uh, get that live to you very soon. So Shashi, we're gonna hand over to you uh, in a second. If you wanna bring up the next slide, just to show people a picture of yourself uh, and a very quick bio that people have kind of called to read uh, in their own time and read now if they wish to. Uh, before I hand over to you, Shashi, I'm just going to remind folks that if they want to ask a question at any time during today's presentation and the little demo and workshop, uh, then they can, of course, use the Zoom Q&A box at the bottom. Uh, do keep an eye on the Zoom chat because I'm going to be pasting links throughout uh, Shashi's presentation, uh, which will tell you how you can get involved with the Jupyter Notebook they're going to show and, uh, and share with you and how you can engage with the workshop in, in real time today. Uh, so I'm going to now hand over to Shashi. Shashi, it's great to have you with us. Thank you so much for joining for today's Arm Tech Talk. Why don't you take it away today, please, and uh, give the audience the uh, the latest on this workshop on real-time object detection on the uh, ARM-based Raspberry Pi and your Orca IP. Thank you so much. Thank you, Tobias. Hi, everyone. Uh, as Tobias mentioned, we want to make this uh, webinar as interactive as possible make sure that everybody participates in it, make sure that actually you can run all the demos that uh, I'm going to run. So what I'll do is give a quick overview of Digitum, what we have built, but more importantly, why we have built the cloud platform. And without spending too much time on the slides, I would like to jump into the demos, which you all can run alongside uh, while I am running those. So a quick intro about Digiram. We were founded in uh, 2017, now close to five and a half years. We are a fabulous semiconductor company that is building hardware accelerators for edge AI workloads. Our first generator accelerator is called Orca. As you can see from the picture here, uh, the part, the production part just came back. We are ramping into volume production uh, this quarter. And along with the hardware, we have built a platform called Delight, which is going to be one of the main focus of uh, today's talk. And I'm going to explain why we built this, give you a flavor of what the platform does. And hopefully you all can also participate and run the demos by yourself. So just a brief overview of what is Delight and why we came up with it. It goes back to the fundamental problem that we are trying to solve here. How to enable rapid development of edge AI applications. Now we know to build AI applications at the edge, developers need a platform that allows them to do this very quickly. The market is moving very fast. Everybody wants to have their product come out very quickly. 
and they should be built with a software that has very easy to use APIs. They want to leverage the best ML models because that would be the comp competitive advantage using the optimal hardware. So along with the software and models, you need powerful hardware to enable sophisticated applications. And finally, whatever platform they choose, they want this to be future-proof. They don't want to be keep on making these decisions uh, very often. So they want to stick to a platform and then keep on developing their applications. So what are the challenges? Well, the main challenge is that every hardware vendor claims that they fit the bill. They say they have the best hardware. They say they have the most easy to use software and they have all the models. But from a developer perspective, you can see that today there is no unified software that makes evaluating all of these hardware options easy. And if developers want to choose a hardware based on benchmarks, of which there are a lot, you hear about tops, tops per watt, frames per second, frames per second per watt, and you know, people invent new metrics to make sure that they look good. And these benchmarks actually do not translate to application performance. They are not transferable from one hardware to another. Even within a hardware, they don't scale from one model to another. So it, people cannot really make a choice just based on these benchmarks. And to add to all these complications, when developers want to bring their own models, porting these models to hardware is a very frustrating experience. Because of all of these challenges, today, hardware selection process is pretty long and frustrating. People have to buy the hardware. They have to install all the software tools that come with this hardware. They have to port or design models that are compatible with this hardware, write the application software, benchmark this performance, and they have to repeat these steps for all the hardware options that they want to consider. This results in basically not only separate application software and models for each hardware option, but the amount of time it takes to do this process leads to a lot of wasted money and effort. So what is needed? Once you look at the problem this way, it is easy to see that today there is a need for a platform that makes evaluation quick and easy. It is powered by a software that works with multiple hardware. And finally, the platform should provide a tool chain that allows people to port models without any friction. And this is what we exactly developed in the form of the Delight Cloud Platform. The Cloud Platform has a device form that is maintained by us. So it has devices equipped with different edge AI accelerators, Arca that is ours, and planning to add a few more edge AI accelerators in the future. And these devices are accessible through the cloud. So this means that people can get started with application development on real hardware without having to spend any time or money on actually buying this hardware. The cloud portal also has ready to use models, which means that developers can start developing applications very quickly. And we also have tools that allow you to go from a model checkpoint to a working code with a single click. And we are going to be showing some demos on this. Uh, as Tobias mentioned, uh, to get the maximum benefit out of this webinar, uh, we ask you to sign up for the platform. The platform is free to use. You can sign up on our website, after which you will get an email in which you can confirm and set your password, and that will allow you to access these hardware. The platform offers many benefits, 
mostly related to how it cuts the development time from weeks to minutes. Because you have cloud access to hardware, means that you have no upfront investment in buying the hardware. You can run inference in the browser, no software installation needed. In under one minute, you would be able to run multiple models to check for yourself. We have unified APS for multiple hardware so that you are not locked into a particular hardware. We have an extensive model zoo, which means that you can start developing immediately. And you have cloud compiler tools that allow you to bring in your own models. And finally, we have cloud model zoos that allow you to deploy your developed models almost immediately. The platform is complemented with our Python software development kit. And we are not exaggerating when we say that these are the only five lines of code that you need to understand what our platform is about. We have a simple Python package called Digirum, which allows you to connect to an AI server and a model zoo. You can load any model that is within this model zoo and you can send an input to the model and get the results and then visualize the output. So each line in this code solves a different problem that is faced by developers today. Coming to one of the main topics for today's webinar is the excitement we have surrounding using Orca for embedded applications, especially paired with ARM-based SOCs. So as I mentioned before, Orca is an AI accelerator. So it is always used along with an application processor. So it can be used uh, along with Raspberry Pi, rock chip based uh, SBCs and so on. Uh, and it is not a standalone processor. So it is available in different form factors such as M.2. Uh, we'll be having a USB form factor soon. And from the picture, you can see that it supports dedicated DRAM. So this allows you to run multiple models and very large models. And a couple of integrations that we are really excited about is the Raspberry Pi with the Home Assistant yellow board. So Home Assistant folks have developed a carrier board for the Raspberry Pi compute module uh, that exposes the full M.2 slot. So here you can see the Raspberry Pi compute module that probably everybody knows based on the ARM uh, Cortex-A72. And here we have the Arca M.2. And there are other Raspberry Pi based boards. Uh, we have a board made by WaveShare that also has, that can also take a Raspberry Pi compute card. And on the back, there is an M.2 slot into which we can put our Arca. Recently, we have been integrating Arca with Orange Pi. It's a rock chip based single board computer that actually has a full M.2 slot with four lanes of PCIe. Again, a quad core Cortex A76 and a quad core Cortex A55 along with the ARM Mali GPU. Actually, today we are going to show some demos running on, on these parts. And the focus of today's demos will be object detection models. Just a brief overview of what the models are. So the object detection mod models help you to identify as well as localize the objects in an image. So typically in machine learning models, you have classification, detection, and segmentation. Classification tells you what is the main focus of the image. Detection tells you not only what objects are there in the image, but where they are. And their accuracy is measured in terms of their ability to classify and 
how tight the bonding box is across the object. And in this object detection, there are single stage and multi-stage detectors. Multi-stage models, basically, as the name suggests, work in multiple stages. In the first stage, the model finds regions of interest. So it comes up with this different regions and say, oh, these are the areas where there could be interesting objects. And then a classifier processes these candidates and says, what is present in those regions? These are computationally very expensive. So in the last few years, there has been a lot of focus on single stage detection models. A few of the names would be very familiar to most of the audience here. Mobile Net SSD, YOLO, CenterNet, Efficient Net, uh, recently Vision Transformers. And in these single stage models, a single network predicts the location as well as the categories of these bonding boxes, uh, leading to very real time applications. Of course, object detection has a lot of use cases, I'm not going to go over all of them, but suffice to say that in the future, we can expect um, a lot of these applications to be driven by AI in the world of smart infrastructure, parking garages, security, surveillance, transport, in the manufacturing sector, in the retail sector, and healthcare and automotive. So familiarity with object detection models and ability to run them in real time is going to have a huge impact. So today we are going to focus on one class of models called the YOLO V5. So YOLO V5 is, is a very uh, popular class of models uh, that provide excellent trade-off in terms of the accuracy and the speed. So we are now going to move into the demo part of our uh, presentation. Uh, we are pleased to announce that attendees will have a chance to win our M.2 Accelerator card. So you can scan this QR code to enter the giveaway. Tobias will also place the uh, link in the chat uh, so that you can fill your information and then we'll let you know who has won the giveaway. So the YOLO V5 models, as I mentioned, developed by Alteralytics, uh, they not only support detection, but also classification and segmentation. Uh, they have very easy to use training code. This allows people to quickly train their own custom models. And recently they have even upgraded to YOLO V8 that provides even better performance. So with this, I will actually move to showing the demos. Uh, we have we have ordered the demos in three stages. In the first stage, it is running demos in the browser. So anybody who has signed up for our platform. So if you have not signed up yet, please sign up now. Uh, if you do not receive the email, check in your spam folder. Sometimes it goes there. Uh, even after 30 seconds, you don't receive please send an email to hello at digiram.com. We will send you an invite by ourselves. In the second stage of the demo, we will be running a Jupyter Collab notebook that shows uh, how to run using our Pi SDK, how to run a single model, how to run multiple models in series. In series. And the final demo, I will be actually be showing on a camera. So on a Raspberry Pi system and a two camera demo on a rock chip based system to show real time object detection. With this, I will move to the demo part. So in the first part of the demo, people who have signed up to our Cloud platform can log in to the platform and they would be able to see different model zoos. So we have a 
public model zoo where there are a lot of um, models that you can see classified by their output post processing type so we have classification models yolo models hand detection post detection segmentation and we have filters for the device type whether they are running on arca or cpu and on the precision of the models whether they are float or they are quant so for example we can choose yolo models running on arca that are quantized and we can pick the yolo v5 trained on coco we can choose an image this is our demo cat so this is the cat that we have been promoting in the last couple of weeks and as you can see when you run inference it will actually show the bounding box that it has detected a cat and not only that it will show you the inference duration so this gives you an approximate idea of how much performance to expect when you actually buy an arca and run it locally and not only that you can actually see the code that is used to generate this demo so you can copy this code if you have pysdk installed locally you can copy paste this into a jupyter notebook and the code will give you the same result in fact that is what we are going to see on, in our uh, collab demo so that's detection but you can run any model here so let's say we want to do segmentation we can use the deep lag segmentation model choose the same demo cat and now instead of running detection it will run segmentation so it will draw the contour of the cat and color it so that you know it's much more precise than a bounding box of course you can run classification models also so for example efficient net es and it would say the classification of this cat as you can see from the model zoo there are a vast variety of uh, models or uh, classification detection and so on which you can run and you can experiment on these models uh, see how much performance to expect from the system so i hope at least a few of you are able to sign up and run these demos by yourself if not as i mentioned please send an email to hello at digiram.com and we would be glad to help you the second demo that we have planned for today is even more interactive so tobias if you have pasted if you are not pasted the google collab link if you can paste it people can access it it is all pasted chashi everything should be good to go thank you thank you tobias so here we have made a collab notebook that would allow you to run the code uh, all you need is a token so if you have signed up for the platform you should be able to go to your my tokens you can generate a new token say tech talk that may be expires tomorrow and generate the token and you can copy so i'm going to copy this token paste it here and you should be able to run the code as you can see the code is the first cell essentially installs the digiram package and in the second cell 
we connect to our cloud model zoo with the token and we load a yolo v5 trained on coco we have an image we pass the url of the image so the api works on a image path works on the url works on a numpy array works on a pill object multiple options but here just to make the demo simpler we just point it to the url and we show the output result dot image overlay contains the output and which we show it through the image show as i mentioned the zoo has lot of models so you can say okay you are running the coco model how about a face detect model so you can just replace replace coco with a face detect model and instead of recognizing people it recognizes faces then you can say let me run a hand detection model now it detects hands so as you can see uh, only thing that you need to change is the model rest of the code remains exactly the same of course this is a very simple example uh, pysdk allows you to do much more complicated stuff for example real life applications don't just use one model but might use a cascade of models so for example you want to find how many people in the room are wearing a mask so you first run a face detection model and for all the faces detected you want to run whether that face is wearing a mask or not right so and the code is actually very simple it looks like you know face is equal to face detection model of the image and it says for every face in the face that is detected crop that face and run the mask detection model and then show me the output so now you see that this person is wearing a mask and this person is not wearing a mask and similarly a, an example where you want to do a license plate detection so you have a license plate detector followed by an ocr model that actually reads the license plate so again the code is very simple it says license plates equal to the lp detection model and for every plate in the license plate results crop the crop the license plate send it to the ocr and show me the results so this is another demo that uh, we hope people can run immediately i think tobias also pasted in case you are not able to sign up for our platform and generate token in time we have a temporary token that will expire end of today that you can just experiment um after you sign up you will get your own own tokens and play with them so these are parts of our interactive demo finally i would like to move to the demo where we are actually i need to switch off my video now because the demo will be using the same video the same camera so working with images is one thing but pysdk i have been asked to zoom in so that people can see the code better so hope everybody can read this code so here we have locally a rock chip and a raspberry pi system uh the code works with a camera so it can be a webcam it can be a webcam it can be an rtsp stream it can be a youtube url or it can be a usb cam that is attached to your machine so you specify the index you tell where the ai server is located so 
as I mentioned here on my desk, I have a Raspberry Pi based system with Orca underneath. And we have a rock chip system that has Orca on it. So you specify where the AI server is, you load the model. Again, we have the Yolo V5 Coco and essentially pass it to the model predict batch. So to the model predict batch, you will send the video source, the stream, and say it to show the output result. And then it shows here. Maybe I can make the video a little bit bigger. So since it is Coco, I made some objects here. There is a bear. Don't worry, it's not a real bear. It's just a picture. We have a refrigerator, oven. So all of this running on the Raspberry Pi, as you can see, it's giving 30 frames per second and actually it can uh, give even more performance. It is just now limited by the camera speed. So this is a single model and for our final demo, we have multiple models. So here we have a rock chip based system and we are we have two models, a hand detection model, again, based on YOLO V5 and a face detection model that's also based on YOLO V5. So here we are running models in series. That means in parallel, that means we are running both models at the same time. So we are saying that for hands, faces, that are detected by the hand detection model and the face detection model, combine their results and show them on one stream. So as you can see, the face detection model is detecting faces and then it can detect hands. So all of our all of our demos are available. They are open. So we have a public repository called uh, PySDK Examples. Once you sign up for our platform uh, and install PySDK, the repo has all instructions on how to install PySDK, how to configure it uh, for even more ease of use. We have uh, Docker's. Uh, for various use cases. So we have public dockers at, uh, at this site. All of the methods are heavily documented. So you can access our documentation on our docs page. And we have a YouTube channel on which we show a bunch of our uh, demos, including the ones that we have shown you. And that's it. Thank you, Shashi. That's awesome. Do you want to turn your camera back on? I realized that uh, obviously when you were switching to uh, the picture in picture mode, I have to turn it off. So thank you. We'll get you back on back on camera. Why don't we leave that page up for uh, about a minute or two and then 
let's flick back to the and then after a couple of minutes we'll flick back to the giveaway page so people can scan the qr code if they missed it everything is in the uh, in the chat i hope that we managed to uh, the folks managed to copy the links or at least uh, you should be able to directly click on them uh, to access everything and sign up and uh, as shashi mentioned there is also a a temporary uh, code that we pasted in the chat as well uh, for those who maybe the email verification took a bit longer than they'd like and they just wanted to get started. So we've also got that in there. So hopefully that's everything. And as and as they say, you can email them at hello at jajiram.com as well to uh, to get in touch. And thank you again for a great presentation with multiple demos and a workshop. We've crammed it all into 35 minutes, which is just awesome. So you've done a fantastic job and and we're really thrilled that the, uh, that the team have pulled this together so well. So thank you again for that. And I've got a couple of questions, but audience, this is your time to ask questions for Shashi and the team from Dejirum. So make sure you get them in. And as they come in, I will uh, be happy to answer them. So I've got a couple of questions. One of them is, of course, you mentioned about Raspberry Pi and um, Rockchip as, uh, as, the, as the board you showed off. Are there any other ARM SOC or any other ARM-based SOC integrations you've done that are available today or maybe that are coming that you could talk about? Yeah, definitely. So. Uh, there is a lot of interest surrounding the ARM-based ecosystem because of the, the high popularity of the single board computers. So Raspberry Pi with Home Assistant and uh, the Compute Card, those were our first steps. And Rockchip was the second step. But you know we are actually working on a few more integrations, which we'll be announcing in the next month or so. So we are really excited to enable this entire ecosystem uh, especially make the software uh, easy to use along with the embedded applications in which ARM plays a central role. Awesome. Thank you for that. And I think a question on a similar vein has come in, but I um, wanted to ask you about if people have their own models, right? If you've got their, they've got their own models and they want to run it uh, on the, uh, on Orca and the accelerator and, and the platform you've got, can they do that? Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, today, I didn't get a chance to show the demo, but uh, we have posted a video on our YouTube that allows people to actually compile their own models in the cloud. So again, no software uh, tool installation needed. So we have an example of going from a YOLO V5 checkpoint directly to a working demo in less than a minute. Uh, and we also provide additional um, optimization such as uh, quantizing the model. So even today, people who have signed up, they can go uh, and see the compile option, uh, bring in the checkpoint, and it will become a working model in less than a minute. Awesome. That's that's great to hear. And if you're, let's say, you know, quite a few of our, uh, quite a good proportion of our audience are developers, right? And they are, you know, maybe an application developer trying to port to model to that Orca platform. Could you talk about any support you provide for uh, for those sort of people? Yes. So the first support we provide is, you know, for the very popular models, we have uh, cloud tools uh, so that they can compile in the cloud itself. The second type of support is uh, the dockers that I was talking about. So we have our uh, compilers uh, available as uh, dockers. So we have already started uh, giving it to some of our early adopters. So anybody who is interested in porting their own models, uh, they can contact us. So we typically provide support in terms of uh, helping them uh, clean up the models because you know some of them require a few optimizations. So we help with those optimizations. And then our API basically takes an Onyx or a TF Lite file and converts into something that they can run on Orca directly. Brilliant. Thank you for that. And I'm, I'm sure that's how I answer quite a few people's questions. Let's head back up to, if you wouldn't mind, Shashi, the giveaway slide so people can take a look at that, scan the QR code, or and the link as well is also in the in the chat. Um, so uh, either way, you can enter the, the giveaway that way. Uh, one question that came in as a, as a follow-up to a question which was, a, which was answered about, do you have specialized models for saliency detection as well? A follow-up question came in from uh, Shyama, and apologies if I'm uh, pronouncing that incorrectly, Saying if we provided custom models under research, would they remain private until we made them uh, until you or we made them public? And who would have access to the models running on the platform by default? 
Uh, actually, very good question. So this highlights one of the features of our platform. So we have both uh, public and private model zoos. So every organization that signs up to our platform by default has uh, private model zoos. So unless they choose to make it public, they will not be exposing this to uh, anybody. And once they decide to make it public, they can either make another public model zoo and share the models that they want to expose. And that's the other advantage of the cloud platform is that you, know, you can just make this available in the cloud so that people can experiment. And if somebody has a serious use case and wants to license the model, then they can contact the uh, model developer and uh, talk business terms with them. But this allows people to at least get a taste for the model without the model developer having to expose their model weights or architecture to the end user. Amazing. Thank you for that. And I hope that answered your question uh, on that. And then we've got another one that's come in as again, a, as a follow-up question that hasn't been answered of, for the 30 frames per second on the, the Raspberry Pi, the demo you showed earlier, is the model running on in the cloud or with the accelerator attached to the Raspberry Pi locally? Yeah, so the demo, the camera demos were actually on the real uh, device. So it is the Raspberry Pi that is uh, attached to, it is the Orca attached to the Raspberry Pi. Uh, so it is actually running on, uh, maybe the video is blurred, but uh, it is actually- It this... is unfortunately blurred, yes. Yeah. Yes, but we can but just yeah. about make it out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it is on the real uh, real device. So it is on Raspberry Pi with uh, Arca. Uh, awesome. So there is an ecosystem surrounding Raspberry Pi, as you well know. Uh, there are board manufacturers who are building carrier boards that expose the PCIe. So this was one such board. And the uh, Arca goes into the PCIe slot. Amazing. Thank you for that. And this is your last chance to get any questions in for, um, for Shashi and the Dijerum team. We'd love to hear any, uh, any questions you have. Get them in now because we are not far off time. And also, if you see a question that comes in and you think, oh, I'd like that answered, uh, then uh, make sure you hit a thumbs up uh, on that. So, okay, Shashi, you know, you've done a, a great presentation today. Before, um, while we wait for those last couple of questions to come in, is there anything else you wanted to maybe highlight or any particular call to actions you wanted to ask for the, for the audience today, just to kind of sort of summarize things and round things up? Yeah, I mean, we, we want to emphasize that uh, the platform is uh, free to use for evaluation purpose, right? Uh, and we are going to add support for... Uh, other hardware as well. So one of the things that I want to highlight is in the ARM-based ecosystem, uh, just on the CPU itself, people leverage some of the uh, AI capabilities such as using ARM compute library, ARM NN. So these integrations are also coming in in the future. That's great to hear. No, really, that's really good to hear. And, um, and thank you for that. So we haven't had any final questions come in, but um, you know, is there any final things you want to add, Chashi, on your end, or are we good to wrap up from your side? Yeah, so we we want to invite everybody to try out our platform. Uh, as, as I mentioned once more, uh, the platform is free. Uh, we want to work with model developers. So as I mentioned, uh, Edge AI applications are only possible if software, hardware, and models all come together and it is not possible for a single company to make all of this. So what we are trying to do here is build an ecosystem where model developers have a chance to showcase the strength of their models. Application developers can leverage this platform to quickly build and make proof of concept of their applications. Right? So the entire idea surrounding the Delight Cloud platform is building this ecosystem. So we want to welcome uh, all the model developers and application developers to take full advantage of uh, this. And one of the things that is lacking in the ML community at large is, you know, when things go wrong, where do you turn for support? So, you know, when things work, everything is fine. When they don't work, it can get quite frustrating to make the models work. So this is another place where Digitum can help because we have toiled for, five years, just getting models to work, we know how painful it can be. 
So we want to let the model developers and application developers know that we share their pain. Uh, they can, you know, we, we try to provide as best service as possible. So you can open issues on uh, GitHub, you can send us an email and we will try to help as much as we can. Brilliant, thank you. That was a great little summary. So thank you so much for that. And thank you again for a fantastic tech talk. You know, as I said, uh, just just before we got to the Q&A, you know, you've combined a couple of demos, workshop and information all in 35 minutes, which is just awesome. So jam packed tech talk to finish off before the summer break. So audience, I hope you enjoyed it. I really uh, hope you enjoyed the workshop and engaged with all the resources. The recording uh, from today's webinar will be available immediately after today's talk. And we'll also make sure that all the links will be available in the description as well. So if you did miss anything and you want to try it out in your own time, or maybe you were driving and thought, oh, I'll do that when I get to the office, or I'll do that when I get home, uh, then you can for sure try it out and make sure all the links are available there. Uh, so that's it for this Arm Tech Talk for this week. We'll see you again after the summer break, probably in around September time. Uh, but all that remains for me to say is Shashi and the Dijeran team, thank you so much for today's great Arm Tech Talk. And audience, we look forward to seeing you again in September when our Arm Tech Talk series resumes for all the latest and greatest in trends, technologies, and best practices from Arm and our ecosystem partners. Shashi, thank you so much again for today's Tech Talk. Audience, we'll see you again soon.